Hi everyone, welcome to the USMLE Ultra High Yield Question Solving Session, which is meant for if you're taking USMLE Step 1, Step 2, Step 3. In this, I will be going over a cardio question, which is incredibly ultra high yield and many people get this wrong. There's a 30 to 40% chance that it will show up in either of your steps, which is Step 1, Step 2, Step 3. And if you get this right, you'll easily add one to two points to your score. So let's go through this question together. So starting with the general question solving etiquette, you need to read the key which is the last line of the question to see what they're asking you. Administration of which of the following is most likely to prevent further episodes of chest pain in this patient? So this question is about the prevention of chest pain. So let's read through the question. A 55 year old woman, so she's old, comes to the emergency room 30 minutes after sudden onset of chest pain radiating to the left shoulder. Okay, so it's telling me there's some kind of cardiac issue going on really. Prior to the onset of her symptoms, she was lying in bed because of a migraine headache. Episodes of similar chest pain usually resolved after a couple of minutes. So they're telling us that she's had this chest pain and it automatically resolves which is telling me that this is not something that is a myocardial infarction because a myocardial infarction is complete infarction right it will not resolve like that this is some kind of angina that is going on in this patient whether it is stable angina unstable angina i don't really know let's go through that she has smoked one pack of cigarettes daily for 20 years so it's adding to the history okay this is likely a heart disease her only medication is sumatriptan and if you know sumatriptan is a medication that's a vasoconstrictor it works on the serotonin system and it constricts the blood vessels in your brain to treat the migraine and ECG shows ST segment elevations in the anterior leads. So maybe is this like ST segment elevation myocardial infarction? Maybe it is that, right? But then they tell you that there are serum troponins are negative on two successive blood draws and ECG shows no abnormalities. This rules out the ST elevation myocardial infarction because the serum troponins are negative. In a myocardial infarction, you have infarction of the cardium. It's going to cause a lot of the troponin to get released because of cell death. And, and also ST elevation MI never resolves like that, right? You need to give something to treat it, cause it to resolve. But this is likely not ST elevation MI. So what is it? 30 minutes later, administration of which of the following is most likely to prevent further episodes of chest pain. And ECG shows no abnormalities 30 minutes later. Administration of which of the following is most likely to prevent further episodes of chest pain in this patient. So if you look at this question stem, you have a lady that's coming in who has this chest pain, which is radiating. So it is likely cardiac. But at the same time, there is no troponin leak. Also, we have ST elevation. The only, only thing that makes sense is ST Prince Metal Angina. And it makes sense that she's on Sumatriptan. And Sumatriptan can cause vasoconstriction in the heart and trigger the Prince Metal Angina. And if you remember, the way you treat Prince Metal Angina is not through propanolol or not like you treat usual angina or a myocardial infarction. The way you treat it is by using a calcium channel blocker. So dilatasm is likely the answer. Yes, this is the correct answer. So why are other options not the answer? If you look at Ramipril, it is an ACE inhibitor and it is more useful for ST elevation M, non-ST elevation M, not vasospastic angina. Clopidogrel is antiplatelet. If there you've had an MI, you can use clopidogrel or aspirin or a combination like DAP therapy. Aspirin is not the answer as well. Propin is a non-selective beta blocker. It's more dangerous in variant angina because in variant angina, just like the cocaine mechanism, if you've heard of it, if you end up giving a beta blocker, you're blocking the action of epinephrine and norepinephrine on the beta receptors. So they're going to act on the alpha receptors and cause more constriction and that can cause problems. So you won't use propin at all. But it is definitely used useful if you want to help with ST elevation or non-ST elevation MI. Dilate is the calcium channel blocker and that's kind of why it's the answer. By the way, just also wanted to introduce you to the new question bank that me and my team have developed. It is free to join. This question bank is called as Step Genie. The way it is better compared to other question banks is that it has artificial intelligence directly integrated into the question bank. This AI question bank is incredible because it uses artificial intelligence to teach you USMLE concepts two to three times faster and gives you score gains in your USMLE prep two to three times faster than you would or other question bank. Apart from that, it also cuts down your USMLE prep by 50% because what we are focusing on is mostly NBME high yield material, which will show up on your exam. So let's say if you want explanation for this question, you can just ask the AI to explain the question and the AI will give the explanation and it gives you the answer here. And you can even ask it to give you a hint and it will generate 
generate hints for you. So think about transient elevation with normal troponins if you want hint. And you can also ask it to break down the approach and it'll give you the step-by-step -step approach. So identify the pattern of ischemia linked to patient risk factors and triggers, name the pathophysiologic process, right? So coronary vasospasm, which is a variant in joint. What is the preventative therapy using a calcium ch channel blocker? And let's say if you want to go deeper in it, like you can click tell me more and it will create an entire explanation for you. This is the AI question bank, guys. If you enjoyed it, you can check it out. There's 15 questions daily that you'll get for free. And again, this is the best question bank that I was able to develop and I want to distribute it to all. So if you are interested, you can check it out using my link below and hopefully you find it helpful. I'll also include a discount code if you end up deciding to get it. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.